the ball to Western Suburbs and the rain beating down as the match starts. Jack Gibson inside there gets the ball outfield to Kelly and Kelly is dragged along the ground by Kevin Ryan. Someone shoots the ball wide to Kevin Smythe. Smythe moves infield to Western Suburbs and the crowd awaits the first electrifying movement of the match and it doesn't come off as their giant forward, Kel O'Shea, coming back after injury, tries to force his way through the goes from Malone to Summons, outfield again, but again we see the strength of St George as they move up quickly, this time it's Rasmussen doing the tackling. The ground is in very treacherous condition with the heavy margins. You can see already Ian Walsh is covered on one side, and later on the players are completely covered in mud. Across field they go, a chance here to go to Peter Diamond, he's covered in a tackle by Lundgren and Collard, and almost dragged over the sideline. Dougal dummy half gets the ball across to Hayes and players force Bryce and George down to the West 25, although West has possession. A penalty against St. George is for Kevin Ryan being offside. A penalty kick by Farris gets touched just over halfway, a couple of yards, and down goes the scrum. Malone tries to use Lawler there as a shield, but it doesn't come off. This time John Smythe again tries hard to get through the forward. Smythe is going tackle. Arthur Summons goes into dummy half. Ball going across the back line with Kelly making a barging run amongst the forwards. Kel O'Shea looks around for support as dummy half. They're handling the ball all right as Arthur Summons gets it. Now you can see the mud splashing up. Young Malone going in behind Summons, throws it wide out to Jack Gibson. The front row forward, Gibson is called upon by Lawler to play the ball. He does so, back it goes to O'Shea. just a few yards. Summons blind side, kick over the top, and no way flying down the right wing. Catches King in possession of the ball. Now the scrum, no score is yet in the match, and it's won by St George again to Pollard. Out it goes to Gaznia. Gaznia almost lost the ball in the tackle and gets off the play. Down goes Evans and the lead up work for this try by Evans as he scored in the right corner towards the Sheraton end. There's Law of the referee on the spot he ruled the try, and the lead-up work was done by Norm Proven. It's 3-0 as Gaznia tries to convert the try from touch. There's the kick by Gaznia. It fails, goes to the left, and the score is 3-0 in favour of St George, just on 70 pounds. We're holding the players apart there as he's calling for the three-yard rule. For the try line, but a great tackle by Parrish pulls him down. Ball is played back to Raper. Raper gives it out to Proven, who tries to try and barge over on his own, but he's forced back by the grim defence of Western Southern. Ball goes back to St George, out a long pass to Pollard. Pollard gives to Gaznia. Gaznia tries to get the ball to King, he does so too, and King is tackled. They're short of the west line now. Attacking position as they go across field. Raper shoots it wide again down the centre of their game. Pollard trying to force his way through the defence. And George will gain tackle short of the line. Pretty scraggy play there. And it's a penalty here. It looks like Meany offside. Right in front of the goalpost. And this will give a chance to St George to notch a goal. It's Gaznia that takes the kick. And as the flags are raised, St George now leads. Five points for nil. Hayes, dummy half, gets it on to Gibson, gets it on to Meany, and already you can see the slowing up of the players in this heavy mud, which is very awkward conditions for both sides. Five nil, good winner. Back it goes to Malone, to Arthur Summons, who dummies to kick over the top and loses the ball in the tackle. Well, the rules are knocked on as he regains it, and we'll see the scrum going down. The applause from the supporters. Evans goes the open side, tries to force his way through. Smythe drives him in field. And O'Shea tackles from second row. Going across the back line now. A good break here as it goes through. A beautiful pass into Gazzi. Look at him slicing the opposition as he goes down. Can he get the ball free? At the last moment, he throws a brilliant pass into Proven onto King. And King is tackled just a few yards short of the line. the cross field looks like Western Suburbs are outside again and this gives Gaznia another chance to put George another 
two points on the board. All around the ground, you see the western suburbs and St George colours raised by their supporters. And it's certainly a day to remember. Gasnius kick, and hits the back of the marker, and Gasnius quickly scoops up himself and tries to dash across, but the defence recovered very quickly and held him out. He plays the ball back. Out it goes quickly, just nothing there. Tries to get across. Short of the line. Trouble playing it. Ian Walsh out there shooting the ball out wide to Raper. Raper turns back in field to Gibson's tackle. He drops his pass. Norm Proven gets got a chance of going across. He's across the line, but the ball is lost. Knocked out a touching goal and another scrum. Penalty. Okay, Hit by Don Carey from right on touch. Plenty of distance, as you can see, it faded to the left and caught by Langland, who decides to run it out. Langland runs up the centre, gains about 20 yards before being pulled down. Waiting for players to clear off him. Played back. The ball was loose by quarter there, but it's picked up. But West were too anxious to get possession back from St George and are penalised. Ball kick the cut, scrum to follow. Here's a bad mull by Pollard. Standing a little bit too far away from the play itself in the roof condition. There's enough time. There's only 20 minutes to play left and George leads by foot. There's a run by Simon and he kicks the ball through. A chance here as they go down the field. Look at King shepherding Langland as he yeah, dives in the mud for that ball. Langland's forced to play a ball. It's picked up or it's bundled there and they follow through. By McDougall, McDougall scoops it up and dives over with the try. The try to Western Suburbs pick up McDougall, and that now puts the game on the board at 5 3 in favour of the George. Double kick to make it 5 all by Parry from almost in front. What's Parry slip on his front? Down he goes, he lost his balance, the kick floated to the left, and the score remains 5 3 with Parry losing a golden opportunity to make it 5 all. now as they wait for the final 15 minutes of play. Meany he throws the ball wide at the ruck. He tries to shut wide at the ruck, but he couldn't get to it, and St. George threw it away wide. Again, St. George desperately trying to get upfield. 5-3 could be enough for this stage. And this King, as he goes through this tackle, which is he had a great controversy as he goes down the side and King will go over here, a tackle from behind but he's dived over and there's a sliding try to King which puts St. George in front eight points back there. All those fans one of them are very close. Harry's testing his decision and we'll leave it to you where the King was held in those tackles before he slipped out of them without grounding the ball and being held. Here's a kick from touch to raise the flag and the score remains 8-3 in favour of St George with time running out to the suburbs. Gaznia is now on the wing position, London coming into the centre three quarter, London nursing uh, Gaznia rather nursing an injured back. Going across the centre of the field we see St George right in the heavy work there, sorting themselves out. But Lawler Puts the scrum down right in the centre. Pretty hard to hold on here. And down go the forwards. They say they're not properly organised. Well, it blows the whistle. Brings them back to the original spot. A little bit of rough stuff going on in there. Kevin Ryan being pulled out. And Norm Proven being pulled over to lecture his size from some heavy play. His rapist signalling, trying to cover every possible position. And just look at that. Shocking conditions. One boy west and down they go in a dying effort to win the match and a beautiful in pass but it's put on the ground. Impossible to hold and there's the end of the game from that knock on. With the players shaking hands, some dropping jersey and Darcy Lawler leaves the ground. And there's some of the players coming up. Look at Norm Crowe, just completely covered in mud, being chaired to the side of home by his teammates, being their captain coach and winning the eighth premiership for St George.